More than four months after offering a prisoner swap to free wrongfully detained Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan from Russia, the U.S. is still waiting for a, quote, serious response from Moscow. In the meantime, we are learning more about the horrific conditions Griner is facing after being moved to an IK2 penal colony, essentially a labor camp that's been described as inhumane and slavery-like. Dave Zirin writes in The Nation that not only is the penal colony notoriously racist and utter hell for LGBTQ people, but one activist and member of Pussy Riot who spent two years at a colony says prisoners are expected to work 16 hours a day, beatings and torture are common, medical care hardly exists, international observers have no idea about Griner's particular conditions or even if her bed can fit her six foot eight inch frame. And joining me now is Dave Zyron, sports editor for The Nation and author of The Kaepernick Effect. It's been too long, Dave. It's good to have you on. I want to read a little bit from your column. Um, you write about the rights reaction to the punishment that this woman presumably is enduring. And you write both the anti-drug law order, dr anti-drug law and order crowd and the right wing cult of Putin and Russia authoritarianism crowd want to see her punished for no other discernible reason than her identity and politics. They point out that Griner protested during the national anthem and wore shirts in solidarity with Breonna Taylor, who was murdered by police in Louisville, Kentucky. Because Griner exercised this speech, she is somehow not really American and somehow worthy of this kind of punishment. Trump insulted Griner, which opens the door for his minions to do the same. As has been said by many, if this was Tom Brady or Derek Jeter in a prison camp for nine years, the outrage would become an unholy din. I'm just going to let you talk about this case. I mean, it, it hurts to talk about this case uh, because Brittany Griner is in a situation that nobody on earth should be in. I mean, if people out there are concerned about the prison system, I mean, you have to be concerned about it in the global context. If you're concerned about the war on drugs, the war on cannabis, people in prison for nonviolent non drug offenses, then Brittany Griner needs to be your cause as well. I'm seeing too many people say, well, we have those problems here, so why should I care about Brittany Griner over there, when I think caring about Brittany Griner is actually a part of caring about the problems here at home. So that's what I'm dealing with in terms of like these articles and these ideas on one side of the political spectrum. On the other, we have what you just read. Like, I've actually been shocked, and I've got some calluses, Joy, but I've actually been shocked by the right's response to Brittany Griner's capture. And maybe that's me being naive about the racism, sexism, and homophobia on the right in this country. But I really thought this idea of an American, an Olympic athlete, uh, somebody who represented this country and has medals on her chest because of it, would at least gain some sort of bipartisan effort at a grassroots level to say, gee, maybe she shouldn't be in jail for nine years for, in, in an act of what is essentially essentially hostage diplomacy. And yet at the same time, we don't have that in this country. We can't even unite on bringing Brittany Griner home. And that is to the deep condemnation of the right wing. And I mean, I have to assume that Moscow is watching the way that we as a public react to this, right? I mean, at first, we were being advised, don't play it up because we don't want to make her seem more valuable to them. And then when, we, when that changed and we're all screaming, bring her home, it seems like it, we all are looking for, for, you know, how to act. I'm assuming that Moscow can see that there is not a united front behind this athlete and that they, that, that influences what they do. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look, look it, it, it doesn't take uh, somebody with a PhD in political science to understand that Vladimir Putin spends as much time studying U.S. domestic politics as it seems like he does studying Russian domestic politics, because he likes inserting himself in our, quote unquote, culture wars. And he likes the fact that he's an icon to not just the U.S. far right, but to the far right internationally, I mean, for authoritarians the world over. So he wants to play that that up and holding Brittany Griner over the heads of just well-meaning good people in the United States. I don't even want to say liberals or the left. I mean, just people of good heart who want to see her home with her family, like for, for Vladimir Putin to see that we can't even agree on that to him makes Brittany Griner nothing more than a tool by which to tweak the United States. Meanwhile, what we're trying to say is, no, this is a human being. And part, part, part of asserting Brittany Griner's humanity 
Kennedy. It is also making sure that for our own government, for Antony Blinken and Secretary of State, that freeing Brittany Griner and freeing Paul Whelan be on the top of their to-do list, because I really do think it diminishes yeah. us as a country if we just yeah. fold our arms while she suffers. A hundred percent. And it's almost the holidays, the, you know, the end of the year holiday season. Um, we're fully in the holiday season. So we wish her wife and also Paul Whelan's family um, and her loved ones very well. Uh, and Dave Zirin, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here.